Hello, this is the first part of a series of demonstrations on non-imaging optics. In this demonstration, we will investigate how lens arrays can be used to create uniform illumination. Lens arrays are often used in microlithography and projection display, such as in the two light engines that we have here, where they are used to produce uniform spatial illumination on micro displays. Let's first have a look at the working principles of lens arrays and why they need to be used in tandem. We first consider a single lens array. This first lens array divides the incoming on-axis collimated light into individual beamlets. By adding a condenser lens at the appropriate location, we can make all these beamlets overlap on the target. However, this is not true for off-axis rays. As we can see, the off-axis component of the light, represented by the rays in red, spills beyond the edges of the target. And that's where the second lens array comes into play. The second lens array acts as a field lens that tilts the off-axis component of the incoming light so that both the on-axis and the off-axis component of the light overlap at the same location on the target. The F number of the lenses must be chosen carefully to match the size of the source so that light does not spill on neighboring lenses. If this is the case, then ghost images will appear on the target around the initial illuminated region, as we are now going to demonstrate. In this demo, we use an illuminator with a fiber bundle to carry the light to the input of our system. An iris let us control the size of the source. The light is then collimated by a console lens and the beam is divided into multiple beamlets by the two lens arrays used in tandem. These beamlets are finally superposed onto each other with a second condenser lens. In this case, we are going to remove that second condenser lens and observe the superposition of the beams in the far field on a distant screen. Let's have a look at the effect of the extent of the source. This is the illumination we obtain with the smallest source size that the iris allows us to set. If we start opening the iris and thus increasing the diameter of the source, we can notice ghost images appearing and becoming brighter at the bottom, top, right, left, and along the diagonals of the initial rectangle. If we place a sheet of paper in front of the second lens array, we can visualize the distribution of light produced by the first lens array. In this case, we clearly see some dots which correspond to the images of the source. To demonstrate that, we can open the iris and see how the corresponding size of the source images increases. When the size of the source images is too large, overlap happens between neighboring lenses, leading to ghost images on the target. We can also notice some artifacts on the target. First, the ghost images at the top and at the bottom of the central rectangle do not disappear completely, even when the source is small. This is because the fillets in between the lenslets in the first lens array scatters some light, creating some crosstalk between the lenses in the second lens array. Also, the blue dots on the screen correspond to the reflection of the lens array on the condenser lens which does not have an anti-reflection coating. This illustrates the importance of anti-reflection coatings in both imaging and non-imaging systems. By adding the second condenser lens, we can visualize the intensity distribution on the screen. We clearly see that the intensity distribution, in this case, is discrete. While the spatial uniformity is high, the intensity distribution obtained with lens array systems is highly non-uniform.